Well, greetings, party enthusiasts. My name is Vicki Soma. This is Tegal 3D. In today's episode, we're going to talk about customizing and printing uh, 3D printed glowing pumpkin pendants or pens. So this is actually my first model that I ever put up on Thingiverse. And what I was trying to do was um, have something small and Halloween-y for kids at craft shows. And so I did these little pumpkin pendants um, or pens. You could put a pen back on the back or you can put a string through the little vine loop-de-loop -loop to make it a um, quick little necklace. And I do print this in three colors. Um, this one is actually black and then glow fill and then orange. And this one is just a little bit of a variation. It's green, glow fill, and orange. And the idea here is the glow fill shows through where we cut out in the, the orange. And so these will, their faces will glow in the dark. With the actual printing of these in the multiple colors, I do use multiple processes in Simplify 3D. And the way I run these, I run these as three separate prints. So I would do a print that goes from the beginning of the print to the, the beginning of the model to the 1.5 millimeter mark. And then that print stops. And on my own time, I could go ahead and do my filament switch. Uh, then I would start a second print, the glow fill which just happens to start at the 1.5 millimeter mark and it goes for another uh, one millimeter. Then um, I start a third print. So these are three separate prints, just the slicer knows where it's gonna be starting the print process. Uh, in this case, these models are quite flat. So I have the ability to run these as just normal prints. Uh, my printer uh, has enough room to home its accesses and do its usual startup procedures like moving the nozzle off the bed and oozing some filament. Because this model's flat, I can get away with that. Uh, if I was doing something taller, like my multicolored gazebos, then I would be doing some more customization of my processes. I would be fine tuning my startup scripts and my ending scripts. So up on Thingiverse, I do have about six uh, face variations for you to choose from, but part of the fun of 3D printing is customizing things. So I also have a template model out there. So even if you're not really into modeling or you haven't even uh, given it a shot yet, it would be pretty easy to customize this in Tinkercad, which is free. So I thought I would go ahead and walk through that. So the first thing you wanna do is go to this uh, object on Thingiverse and you wanna go ahead and download it. If you go under Thing Files, you'll see down here there is a template that you can download. All right, in Tinkercad, over on this right-hand side, there's an import section. You wanna go ahead and browse, and browse to the file you downloaded. And actually, I should have done this uh, a little earlier because I have a lot of downloads. It's gonna take a second or two to load up. Here we go. Template glowing pumpkin. So I'm gonna import that in. Uh, I'm gonna keep it in millimeters. That's what I always work on, and I do import. Okay, and here we have our little pumpkin pendant. At this point in time, we can manipulate it and interact with it just like other Tinkercad objects. And this includes carving things out of it, subtracting things out of it, punching holes in it. So I can go down here into um, my sh geometric shapes and I can just start picking objects that I'm gonna to use to carve out my face of my pumpkin. And say I wanna do something very standard, I can move this roof object over here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees. I can scale it as I see fit. And it doesn't matter how tall it is because we're gonna talk about that in a second. I can go and duplicate it, move it over here, you like. I can duplicate it again, move it down over here, well, let's get fancy. Let's do a little round roof over here. And we are just going to rotate that the 90 degrees. And let's carve out a tooth. And that's a pretty big tooth, so we'll scale it down. And we'll go ahead and duplicate it. And we'll go ahead and make you a hole. And we'll make you a hole. And we will select all these things and make a group. 
Okay guys, so here's the only trick when you're doing your carving into your design. If you are going to go ahead and try to do the glow fill peaking thing, where you're gonna do multiple colors, you wanna make sure that your carved face, like your holes, are all gonna start at the same spot. And the reason is, you don't want, you know, like if one eyeball cut hole is up higher than the other, then it's gonna print some solid color that's gonna cover up the glow fill. Um, so you wanna make sure that those are all even. You don't necessarily have to stick to the 2.5 millimeter place that I am, um, but you just wanna make sure that those cutouts are all starting in a consistent place so the glow fill will be showing through no matter where your printer starts. So you'll be able to see where the bottom of your object is gonna be. So I'm just making them all consistent at the 2.5 mark. Then you just go ahead and you make them holes. Hole. 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 It's cute. <laughs> you group it and then you will go ahead and do the um, uh, download for 3D printing so you can get your STL file of your customized little thingy bobber. Now if you want to get a little fancier, we can bring in a free software called Inkscape into the mix. And what you can do is you can open up a graphics program and make a little drawing of what you want for your face. Or you, you can even grab like a sheet of paper and a dark sharpie and draw the face really, really dark with what you want. Once you make it into a nice black and white image, we can open up Inkscape. So open up Inkscape. And it is extensive. There's a lot of stuff going on there, and a lot of it, I don't know what it does yet. Um, I'm just gonna walk you through my steps, and I'll also put a link to a blog post down below where you can learn a little bit more. But your first step is you're gonna open up your image or your drawing that you've done of your face. So I'll go to File, Open. I'm gonna pick a little face that I drew up really quick in Microsoft Paint. And then I'm gonna click on it to select it, and you can see the arrows that are around it. Next, I think I go to Path, Trace, Bitmap. The first thing I'm gonna do is check this Live Preview button here. And then I typically play around with these little settings. Uh, I think more often than not, I use the brightness cutoff. And you know, you just play around until things look okay, and I will go ahead and say all right. At this point, it looks like um, nothing happened, but there's actually two of your objects here. The one that you imported in and the one that's your traced bitmap. So I keep my new traced bitmap selected and I go to file and I do save as. And I'm gonna not save it as an Inkscape SVG, I'm gonna save it as a plain SVG and that stands for Scalable Vectors Graphic. Okay. So here I am in Tinkercad. I already have my pumpkin template imported in. So now I can go ahead and browse. And this time I can pick my new SVG file that I just made in Inkscape. And you'll see I have a height option here. This will take my 2D object and make it 3D. And, it, and I give my little height that I wanna do. So I'll just say, Oh, we're going to do two, bleh, two millimeters, and I import it in. And as you can see, it is quite large, so I'm going to go ahead and scale it down. And let's go ahead and line it up where we want. You know what, I think I'm going to make it a little bit bigger height-wise. Oh, there we go. Just a little more warm to work with. Okay, and when I'm satisfied, do you know what I do? I make it a hole. And I select them both. And I group it. And there you go. 
I have another little pumpkin that's made based off a drawing that I did. All right, well, that's today's episode. I hope you guys had a good time. I hope you have an awesome Halloween. Um, if you do make any customized pendants, I'd love to see them. If you have any questions or comments, you can comment down below on YouTube. You can reach me on Twitter at TGAW. And I have a 3D printing blog, and that's at www.tgaw.com. Thank you guys for watching, and have a great day.